Hi, this is DarkFox127, and welcome to another Skyrim Creation Kit tutorial video. Today, I'm going to be doing a scripting video, and it's going to be covering creating your very own trophy bases. Now, there's something very similar in the Hearthfire DLC, where you'll have a small pedestal on the ground, you'll activate it, and then you'll go through a small list and create your very own trophies. So, it could be a trophy of a bear that you've killed, or a trophy of a goat, anything that you really want. And mine are going to work very similar to the Hearthfire system but you'll be able to actually remove the trophy afterwards and you'll also be able to get items back that you use to create that trophy. Now ideally this is going to require you to have a little bit of basic scripting knowledge because I don't really want to recover things that I've covered before. So if you need a little bit of basic information on how to create scripts, edit scripts and do other things with scripting, I do have some other scripting videos which I'll have in the description below. So the first thing that you want to go ahead and do is obviously load up the creation kit. So you're going to want to load up your mod. In my case for this video I have a little test ESP which I'm going to make available to everybody in the description below along with the three scripts that we're going to be using. And I have loaded up the Skyrim ESM and the Hearthfires ESM. So the reason I'm going to use the Hearthfires ESM is because I am going to make use of the trophies in the DLC as well as the actual base itself. Now I recommend that you do this, but if you know what you're doing and you can actually create your own meshes and such with NIFScope and other 3D modeling programs, then you can technically do this without Hearthfire. But for people that aren't that experienced with the creation kit and modeling, then I recommend that you just use the Hearthfire and have your mod reliant upon that. Uh, people are pretty much expected to have all of the DLCs this far into uh, the game's life cycle anyway. So that shouldn't really be a problem. So you're just best off using Hearthfire. So I've got that loaded up and I've gone into my little test cell here where I've got a container for the items that I'm going to use to just test things. So I'm going to be creating a bear for my trophy base. Although you can obviously have a menu with a lot more selections but just for this I'm going to create a bear so I've gone ahead and put those items in there out of the way so we're not going to have any trouble when testing. Now the first thing that you want to go ahead and do is go under miscellaneous, go under global and we're going to need to create some global variables. These are going to act as both switches and sort of indicators for the trophy base to understand which one is currently being activated. Now the way that the hearth fire system works is it places a furniture piece which is actually the trophy base and from there it goes straight into a craft menu. Now because I'm trying to make this friendly with having multiple trophies, multiple trophy bases, uh, that means that I'm going to be doing mine a little differently. I'm going to have multiple trophy bases which are going to actually be activators that then link to a furniture piece. And then these global variables are going to allow the currently activated trophy base to know exactly which one's being edited so it'll know where to throw the trophy onto. So what I want to do is alt click and new and I'm going to go ahead and create some global variables. Now don't name all of your IDs exactly the same as mine because it will cause compatibility issues if a load of people copy exactly what I'm doing. So DF127 global trophy active. This global is for being set to the number of the trophy base that is being edited so this will correspond to whichever one you're currently activating. Uh, in this case I'm going to create two trophy bases. If you want to have more than one trophy base or more than two trophy bases, however many you want to create then you're going to have to have global variables for each. But this one is just a sort of universal global so this is going to be used across all of them. So you only need one of those. Now just to make things easier going to narrow it down to the one I just created and edit that and I'm going to call this one placed number one so however many trophy bases you have you're going to have to have one of these global variables for each of them so I'm going to have two so I'm going to create that one and then I'm going to create number two after that now the other one that we're going to need is called in use and basically that is to prevent the player from placing more than one trophy on before they exit the menu. So as soon as you create a trophy, all of the other menu items will disappear straight away so you can only ever create one. Otherwise you'd have a jumble mess of them on the same trophy base. Now I'm going to go ahead and create the actual trophy base. So like I said, mine are going to be activators, but I'm going to have to go under World Objects, Furniture and type in Trophy 
and just search for the one that I want to use which is the singular one if you want to make a double one you can do that but keep in mind that obviously you'd have to have an entirely different script and craft menu for the double ones because they are obviously larger and wouldn't fit on this one but I'm just going to deal with this one anyway now I'm just going to copy the model here so I'll get the path of the actual NIF that I need I'm going to cancel off that go into activator create a new one and I'm going to call it the base and I'm just going to put trophy base in there and you can actually change what the prompt says instead of activate type what you want in there but I'm going to keep it as activate trophy base click on the model edit that make sure you're in the meshes folder which you should be straight away but if you're not you're going to have to navigate there through your data folder paste that into there with control and V hit open and as you can see we've got that mesh there now before I can carry on I need to just confirm it so that the papyrus scripts box will open up for me and then I'll just double click back into it and I'm going to add the first of my three scripts click yes to all if you get that error now the same applies as it does with the IDs and such don't name them exactly the same so when you take these scripts you're going to have to go ahead and make your own script and just paste all of the source code in so I'll just show you an example so for this we're going to use the base one it's going to consist of three scripts so I'll put that one in I'll edit the source I'll copy copy all of that apart from the top line with the object reference extending you don't want that because your own script will have its own one of that so I'm going to copy that with control and C and then I'm going to add my own script I'll create a new one trophy test script or whatever you want to call it got that top line there already paste that in control and S and it should compile without a problem if you do have any compilation issues with scripts compiling issues not compilation compiling issues with scripts then you can check out my numerous videos that I have because there are a few recent changes that can cause problems with compiling scripts including like the raw file packing up in the data folder so I've got my own script there once that's ready to go I can edit it and I just want to fill in the top two properties on the actual base ID so this one here cannot place trophy this is just what you want it to say if you try and place another trophy on top when there's already one there so I'm just going to put trophy already in place and I have set these scripts up to be very modular so people can change them how they want and if you just hover over the properties you'll see that I've actually put tooltips so I don't actually need to go in and explain everything so as long as you follow the tutorial you should be absolutely fine and if you want to know the details you can hover over each one if you want a little reminder of what each of these actually does so active I want to find my active global variable that I did and these two are going to be set individually for each separate reference base so click OK OK again and I'm just going to drag two of these in so like I said I'm going to have two of them I'm going to place those in and put them a little bit far apart from each other otherwise they're going to clash when they've got the trophies on I'm just going to make sure they are floored properly now you're going to want to click on each base and go across to the script and then you want to fill in those last two properties for each one individually so global trophy placed is obviously this is going to be trophy base one that's going to be trophy base two and I'm just going to search there and put place one on there and tag is going to be the same this is trophy base one so type in one for the tag click OK OK and I'm going to just do the same quickly for this one So it's going to be trophy base two. Next thing I want to do is place an X marker heading on top of these, and that's under static. And you want to make sure that you place these individually. Don't duplicate one and drag it onto the other one, just to be safe, just to make sure no references are getting copied. And make sure they are perfectly placed on top and facing the direction you want your trophy facing. That's very important. 
just going to give these a reference. Pretty much trophy marker one and trophy marker two. Now, next thing I want to do is actually create my furniture piece, which is going to act as the crafting system. So I'm going to use the disenchanting font and I recommend you do the same. It's just something that's very basic and not really used in the game. You want to drag that in and you want to make sure this is in the void or just somewhere that's not accessible by the player or this will just mess the entire system up. Then you want to double click on each of these bases again, go to link reference, double click in the box, make sure you can see this in the render window, select reference and select this new furniture piece. Now we want to make this our own version, so double click on it, edit it, and create a new version of it. Oops. So I'm going to call it the Trophy, trophy Craft System, and whatever you type in here is actually going to show on the craft menu, so I'm going to put Trophy Creation, you can put whatever you like. And then under keywords, you want to click new and you want to create a brand new keyword. So I'm going to call mine trophy craft. Click OK. That's very important, otherwise, the system is not going to work later on down the line. And under bench type, this needs to be create object. Now if you really want then you could change the user skill to smithing maybe so each time you craft one, craft one of these it's upping your smithing skill that might actually be a nice idea so we'll, we'll put that in there. I'm going to click OK make sure I create new form. Now I'm actually going to create my very first trophy item so I'm going to go into items and misc and I'm going to use the ones from the Hearthfire DLC. So I'm going to type in trophy and then I'm going to find one other like like I said, I'm going to use bear. Just knock off any errors. That's usually just the uh, the DLC itself. Nothing that you've done wrong. I'm going to find bear. I'm going to use that one. Double click on there. And I'm going to give this a unique ID. Click OK as soon as I've done that. Create a new form. That's very important. You don't want to edit the existing. Go back into it. Remove the existing script. And then we're going to add our very own script again. So I'm going to find that. So it's the trophy misc script. And keywords, I'm going to add one in. If you've got Hearthfire loaded, then you can use the one I'm going to use, which is furniture. Uh, build your own house, crafting category furniture. So it'll look a bit nicer in the menu. And if you click edit there, you can clearly see that that's the correct trophy there. And one thing to mention is if you use your own custom models, you're going to have to make sure that they are facing the correct way. So when you load this up, they should be facing away. And also you're going to have to make sure that these have collision, otherwise you won't be able to use them as activators. So I'm going to double click on this script and I'm going to start filling this in. So I've got active again, so I'm going to select obviously my active global. Then I've got my placed global. Oh, sorry, no, in use global, sorry. In use global then I've got place global for each one so I've got placed one place two now like I say if you're gonna have more than two trophy bases you're gonna have to go ahead edit the script and add these in yourself and that's where you're gonna want a little bit of experience of creating and editing your own scripts trophy item will be itself so going off the fact that we've already confirmed this as a new ID it should be in the list if not you have to confirm it come back in add the script Trophy to place we'll leave for the moment and trophy marker you want to select each trophy marker so again if you have more than two you'll have to make a marker and a trophy global for each. So I've filled those in, click OK, OK, I'm just going to save. Now the next step is to go ahead and create an activator version of the MISC item so this is going to be the actual trophy itself. Now what I want to do is again I'm going to copy the model here and then I'm going to go under Activator, Alt click and New. I'm going to do the model first out of the way. Again, make sure I'm under the Meshes folder. Paste that in. And I've got the bear again there. Click OK. 
So this one is going to be DF127 Activator Trophy Bear. And I'm just going to call that Bear. So what I'm going to do here is I've got the activate text, I'm going to change that to remove. So when you hover over the trophy, you'll have the option to actually just get rid of it. Again, the script is not available yet, so I'll just confirm that. Then I'll reopen it, add the script. Just got this error again. So this time I'm going to go and add my activator script on. If I can find that, there we go. So I'm going to add that one on there, and I'm going to fill in the properties again. So yet again, if you've got more than two trophies, then you'll have the uh, numerous global variables for each after you've edited the script. Now I've got a string here which is items return message so it's just a message that's going to show when you have removed this statue and then the items are given back to you so it will show a little notification. Rather than having every individual item show up going you know bear claws returned, bear pelt returned, so on returned, those are actually set to not show up that notification so that this one of your own will show. So I'll just put craft items returned. Auto fill the player ref. That can be a bit buggy, so just give it a couple of seconds. Now, trophy craft items, I'm actually going to leave blank for the moment because we'll have to go ahead and create some of those. And this is where things get a little more interesting. Now, this is going to let it know exactly which trophy to remove because this is just working off the activator being placed down, but it needs to know what its own position is. So this is going to be different for everybody. So these are integers. Now, if you click edit, it says X pos trophy marker one. So basically, again, you're going to have to have one of these for each trophy marker that you have for each stand. But because I've only got two, I have to set it for two of them. So what you want is to double click on the X marker, go to the 3D tab and the X position here, which is currently 80. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to put that in for marker one. And then I'm going to do the same thing for marker two. This is minus 80. And paste that in there and make sure those are exact or this is just not going to work at all so click ok confirm that off now i'm going to go back and fill in the property that i hadn't filled in for the trophy item so trophy to place that's the actual activator the trophy itself that we just made so i'm going to go and select my bear and that's set up then and now i'm going to go and create that list of items so you want to make a leveled list, alt click new. For the ID, you can again put whatever you want. So I'm going to put leveled list, trophy and bear. Make sure chance none is set to zero and click use all. And then you alt click and new in the box and select the items that you want to use. So mine's going to be a bear pelt and bear claws. So that's what you're going to need to create the trophy. I want to go and click OK on there. Then I want to go back to the activator that I've created and fill that property in for the leveled item I just created. Now the only thing left to do is to go ahead and create a constructible object under items. Oh, click new. Let that load up. And CO for constructible item, put in trophy one for bear. So you're going to have to create these for obviously each trophy. So I'm going to go new. Uh, oh no, sorry. Uh, required item list I don't really want. I'm going to go created item is going to be the misc object. And the keyword you remember we added on to the furniture piece out there which is our trophy craft keyword. Now for this you need to get global value, click on the invalid button and then fill this in as the in use global, click OK and make sure that the value is set to zero and make sure all this is as you see it here. If 
for like the equal signs and the boxes not being ticked click OK and then now for the required items I will put in the same items I put in the leveled list so bear pelt and bear claws and make sure that the created object count is 1 or you'll have some trouble there click OK and hit save now that should be our trophies set up however as you've seen I've only created a bear trophy at the moment if I wanted to go ahead and create more then I'll have to make the misc item the activator the constructible object and also create the global for it so uh, no sorry not the global but if you had more trophies you'd have to make more globals for those but you just have to pretty much go through the process for creating each trophy themselves so what I'm going to do now I'm going to head in game and we're going to see this nice little uh, test setup running okay so here we are in the test cell now and I'm just going to open up this container and grab the test items I need and you can see we can activate the trophy base so I'll click on that which then link refs to the furniture piece which is actually behind the wall and then that brings up the craft menu and we've got the misc item in the craft menu here which is the bear so we can craft that then the global variable in use has now switched to one meaning that we can't actually see anything because we set that condition on the constructible item and then as soon as we come out that then allows you to craft on the menu again but if you try and activate the trophy base with something on it it'll come up with the custom message that you can type in yourself and then we can actually remove the bear this is now the actual activator that's been placed down using the x marker heading and it also knows exactly where to sit itself and now we can remove the bear and when we click that it will detect that the bear is on a certain axis and it will then remove it and it won't disable it because disabling will be bad it will delete it so it should remove it from your game and the craft items should also be returned so as you can see we've got bear pelts 10 again and we've got bear claws 10 again whereas if we were to craft that again the menu is all ready to go again we'll craft that it's done the in use so we can't craft anything on top and if we check the menu we've got nine claws and nine bear pelts now just in case you're wondering how does it know then well I did explain it because if we set certain globals and integers up it'll know which trophy base is being active and this means that we don't have to have a misc item for every trophy we don't have to have multiple scripts for every single trophy it's going to work off the same three scripts but the detection system knows which one you're activating so we can put a bear on there and it will know which one to delete and again you can just build them and all you have to do like I say if you want more items more trophies you just add constructible items for the items that you want you have to make a misc item activator constructible item uh, you're basically repeating half the process obviously not repeating the creation of the activators and such but yeah so that is it that is nice and working and that is it for this tutorial video so if you found it useful please let me know in the comments section below and also let me know if there's anything else that you'd like to see in terms of scripting tutorials and I'll have to see what I can do. Now if you do plan on using any of my resources which does include these scripts in this tutorial then you will need to give me some relevant credit on the description of your mod page or anywhere else on the mod page if you do plan on making it public. All those details you can find on my resource page which will be linked in the description below along with everything else that I've covered in this video. And of course you can visit me at www.darkfox127.co.uk if you want to check out my latest work and anything else that I'm working on. And I also am available on social media such as Facebook, Twitter and I've even got a Steam group if you want to follow that. And of course be sure to hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already. Thank you very much for watching and I'll speak to you next time.